Hi, and welcome to this week's look back at the major stories to have affected the markets in the last seven days. And I think you may well notice a common theme through this week's videos, and that being the banking sector. So let's start right there, shall we? And a Swiss tsunami rips through the markets, and the FTSE 100 wipeout was actually pretty noticeable. A Credit Suisse's financial dire straits affected not just their own local banking sector, you know, in the way that we've seen over in the States. Thursday last week, as the demise of Credit Suisse became a real concern, £76 billion was wiped off of the value of the FTSE 100. And in fact, the five days to Monday, the FTSE lost 5.8% of its value. It was lowest point for over a month, down 9.8% in the preceding 30 days. So pretty impactful, shall we say. Now, Monday morning, there was further concerns over the UBS deal for Credit Suisse. It had fallen through. The values weren't quite right. Um, and obviously concerned about the potential of a write-off of 17 billion US dollars worth of Credit Suisse bonds. Now, obviously, as you would probably expect off the back of that, Lloyd's, HSBC, Standard Chartered and NatWest were all down and the FTSE hit around 73 35. Now, it seems a talk of 8,000 points from a few weeks ago from, from myself in one of these videos, uh, and certainly from many market commentators and analysts, is nothing but a distant memory. Now, the deal for Credit Suisse by UBS has been sorted. There's still a few unclear areas on it, but it's being presented pretty much as a, as a commercial deal rather than a bailout. Um, and we have seen a bit of a recovery in the FTSE in the last few days, now trading around the 7490 to 7500 mark. But obviously, you know, concerns are still there. Impacts are still to be felt as everything becomes a little bit clearer. The FTSE had been on a great run. This has knocked it slightly, but are we seeing a bit of a recovery? Well, we're going to have to watch the markets and find out. Okay, so obviously the market suffered. Um, we talk of Swiss banks and the US banks that we'll come on to shortly. But the British pound reached a one-month high versus the US dollar this week. Now, the impact of Credit Suisse and thus the falling stock markets and falling currencies in Europe was clearly noticeable. It's not just the European side of the Atlantic that has been subject to banking collapses and fallout, obviously. We've had Silicon Valley Bank in the US being a prime example um, of a similar contagion happening over there. And in fact, First Republic, which a lot of traders seem to have turned their attention to recently, was down 61% by March the 13th. So clearly a malaise on both sides of the ponds when it comes to the banking sectors. However, the Great British Pound was gathering pace on Tuesday morning, and in fact, it reached 122 against the dollar, a high point in over a month. And in fact, it's currently trading around the 123 mark. An interesting move considering what had happened to the FTSE in the preceding days. And in fact, the UK government was very, very keen to point out that the UK banking system remains robust and secure. So we've got sort of part of Europe Credit Suisse, obviously, and US turmoil in the banking sector seems to be good news for sterling. I mean, hot off the presses, we've had the UK interest rate go up by 0.25% uh, or 25 basis points today. What effect that will have on the pound is, is still to be seen, and if it's going to negate some of these gains or, or perhaps even drive them further. But it certainly seems to be that the US pound is one of the very few areas to be benefiting from the current banking crisis. Okay. So we've seen perhaps a little bit of an oasis in the current bad news and with, with the great British pound uh, seeming to be a, a positive uh, for us currently. But the euro against the US dollar also hit a monthly high ahead of the Fed news. Now the Fed's record breaking rate hikes to curb obviously pretty rampant inflation does seem to have been a contributing factor to the biggest banking crisis since 2008. We've seen the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank Signature Bank and attention being turned towards First Republic Bank. We've also obviously had the takeover of Credit Suisse by UBS. So what impact is that having for other areas of the market? Well, discussions abound whether the Fed should continue its cycle of raising rates 
Or will the crisis in the banking sector do the same job as their tightening of monetary policy? Opinions seem to be quite split on this. On the eve of the Fed's decision, Euro futures reached a month's high, storming the resistance level that we can see at one in the chart at around 1.082. We're also seeing large volumes at the March lows, followed by a price increase, which may indicate the activity of institu institutional investors buying the euro as they expect further weakness in the dollar. Now, the Fed did raise its rates by 25 basis points. It's still unclear what's going to happen as we move further through 2023. As I say, some say they must pause or even cut to help or prevent further meltdowns in the banking sector, whilst others are saying, well, actually, we now think the peak of interest rates for this year may well be slightly higher. Not hurt the euro, as that's currently circa 1.088 in the spot market. So even a little bit, bit, bit more of a, an increase for the euro against the dollar. It's going to be an interesting time, no shadow of a doubt for that. Perhaps with the shoring up of credits, which I should say the acquisition, that's led a little to a little bit more confidence in the European banking sector than we're currently seeing in the US banking sector. Who knows? But it's a quickly evolving story and, and things are moving quickly. So don't forget your risk management techniques. So three stories so far, um, clearly one common factor. And we're just going to take a look finally, a little bit more specifically, the Fed and the age old question for them of to hike or not to hike. Well, they hiked 25 basis points, 0.25% increasing their range as the Fed does in a range, they can't give an absolute figure. In advance of the announcements, futures contracts took a bit of a downturn pre-market. Um, Investor analysts have looked at the probability of the Fed increase by 25 basis points. So not a major surprise, uh, despite you know some of the commentary going on about, oh, they need to pause or potentially even a cut. Also, the possibility of tightening monetary policy in a slightly different way due to the bank contagion across the US. Now, obviously, they're all at a pain to say everything's fine, everything's secure, everything's stable. Not sure the market or investors are quite buying into that just yet. You know, and despite First Republic Bank getting smashed and teetering, to be, I think it's fair to say, on the edge, because they've been faced with a lot of custom withdrawals, which have been moved to the big tier one institutions over in the States. Those banks have then deposited $30 billion of their customers' money into the First Republic Bank to prop it up. Does that show confidence or is that a bit of a panic move? Who really knows? Fair to say, confidence in the US banking sector is very, very low. You know, futures on the major US indices are down, showing a caution from investors and possibly a bearish approach from them too. Now, banking stocks in the US and, and also in the UK are usually traded by cautious investors due to their stability and their long-term presence. They're all down and sentiment is pretty poor towards them. A lot of cautiousness, as I've said. Yet a meme stock responsible for famous market short back in January 2021 is soaring. GameStop reported 22.4% growth in margins, and the stock was up by 43%. Now, we've seen the US increase interest rates to 25 basis points. We've seen the UK do that as well today. In fact, I think had a pause or, or certainly a cut that some people were talking about may have actually been a bit more of a, a red flag to the market than a smaller increase as they've done of 25 basis points. But it's certainly huge that old banks are causing more fear than a meme stock did just a couple of years ago. Well, where do we go from here? Uh, you know, it, it's very, very difficult to tell at the moment. But I certainly can tell you one thing, and that's the speeches given over, over the next day or so are going to be scrutinised closely for any indication of what's coming in the future. So as I said at the start, there is a common theme this week and that's been the banking sector. What happens over the next seven days is anybody's guess and no doubt we'll pick up on it next week. We'll wish you luck with your trading in the week ahead.